Hi, my name is Güzel. Uh, I come from Kazakhstan and I have been living in New York for uh, a little bit more than a year. I am a program associate at New Women New Yorkers, an, or an organization that is helping immigrant women to find their first fulfilling job in New York. And today I'm with Anus and Deepika, uh, and we're recording the podcast at the end of the day. Thank you so much, Guzel, uh, for this wonderful introduction. And interesting, you are an immigrant yourself, and now you are helping immigrants in this country. How did that happen? Oh, yeah. yeah, tell us, how did you manage to find a job with New York women immigrants within the first year of you being in the U.S.? I found New Women New Yorkers very um, shortly uh, after I came here. And I really wanted to, to be a part of this organization because uh, I really believe in the, um, the power of collective, uh, of a group sharing. Uh, and I also knew that I have to learn a lot of things about how to get a job here in New York. Um, so, and when I started the, the program, I just really loved the way uh, the organization uh, is the way uh, people uh, people are kind to each other and really uh, are supporting each other. So when Ariel said that there was a, this opening, I knew you that I really wanted to. Ariel, is. <laughs> Ariel is the founder of New Women New Yorkers, mm -hmm. uh, and she has been working uh, on the organization for I think five years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our flagship program is Lead. Uh, it is a eight week program where we uh, have one workshop per week, three hours or three hours and a half. It is completely free and we uh, focus on different topics throughout the eight weeks. We talk about the resume writing, networking skills, interview preparation, uh, US working culture. So basically we're trying to help Im these immigrant women to understand uh, what is the job search pro process and how, do they, how can they uh, manage to uh, go through it. You being an immigrant and then now being associated with this organization in the position of a program associate. You're helping young immigrants of your age and my age. Tell us, what are the major challenges of young women immigrants like you and me in the US? There is kind of like self-limiting belief uh, when they think about their level of, of English. Mm -hmm. they yeah. what, what do you mean? Can you can you tell more about this? I mean, I think we, we should get deeper into this topic, self-limiting belief. Being an immigrant, you in many times you don't necessarily, English is not your first language. Right. So you know that you are able to sp speak in a very uh, different way in your mother tongue. And when then, then you switch to English and you make simpler words, sometimes you forget something, uh, sometimes you remember even, you understand that the, the structure of your sentence is not completely correct. So you know it and you feel bad about it yeah. and you have the feeling that everyone else is just th thinking that you're not so smart, mm. which is completely not true because let's face it, most of Americans don't speak another language. Mm -hmm. So this is big uh, added value that immigrants have. Yeah. But so it, it is a uh, matter of switching perceptions and mm -hmm. maybe thinking uh, not about it, not necessarily as a, a drawback, but also as an advantage you have. And uh, what other than language barrier based on the interaction that you have with your mm. participants? What are the other challenges that they face, that they share with you? Obviously, you have the legal uh, part uh, where m many many participants say that it is more, uh, that it is easier to get a job when you have uh, permanent status or a green card. But it is easier, but it, like, more complicated doesn't necessarily mean impossible. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, as an organization, are not uh, able to provide legal uh, services, but we do refer our participants to other organizations who are focused uh, in providing this uh, help for immigrant women. And also kind of related to it is uh, the part where you, uh, in many professions, you have to have mm -hmm. uh, local certification uh, uh, and authorization to work in, in this field. Mm -hmm. right. So these are also challenges where you uh, you have to translate your uh, experience or you are uh, also having your uh, first job experience here. Right. This is very, very, very complicated mm -hmm. and it is, uh, I think, one of the most important things because it is work. it works like signaling uh, to an employer that you uh, know English well enough to be uh, able to work. Mm -hmm. You probably have the, pos like, uh, the work authorization and you mm -hmm. have your papers and also uh, you know about the working culture in US. Mm -hmm. So once you have this first job, it is much easier to uh, 
to find the second one and to uh, like to climb up mm -hmm. the ladder. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it also works with the education. What when you don't have uh, your education here in your uh, in US? Well, first of all, the recruiters they don't necessarily know how to translate your uh, your degree from your home country to uh, to the US equivalent, right. and so they don't have t time to to think about it. So right. they go to mm -hmm. the most straightforward candidate. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. And on the other hand, well, and for this we we are working with a partner organization which is called World Education Services yes. that is helping uh, also to translate your. Uh, academic uh, certifications to uh, U.S. equivalent. Because I just wanted to know, uh, what uh, do you guys do in those eight weeks program? Uh, to be specific, we are talking about the LEAD program. Getting back to my last point, the mm -hmm. education, I think uh, the second part of the w why is the I having education here from here in U.S. is very important, is mm -hmm. that it gives you not, not necessarily the knowledge about what you, uh, about the, your profession, but it gives you the knowledge about it gives you the network mm -hmm. and the, the knowledge about how to uh, how do you do to find a job here, mm -hmm. and this is the the knowledge that immigrants don't have when they they come here. Well, right. they don't have the necessary network. We have one workshop, three hours and a half, that is dedicated to uh, to networking, where we learn how to present yourself in a m effective uh, way, and then most important, we practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have also a couple of practical tips about. How do you start a conversation when you are get into the room and where you have lots of people that right. you don't know? <laughs> where do you start from? Yes, right? <laughs> you're super scared. You're yeah. thinking about your uh, level of English proficiency, mm -hmm. and you don't know anyone. Yeah. And how do you manage your stress? And so you want to make you want to leave a good impression that on each person you talk to, which is like I personally find it a lot of pressure on my mind whenever I attend a networking event. Yeah. So it's difficult. It's like okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a race. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But it, it's all, as with all everything else, you have to practice. Mm -hmm. You need to have your script, know what you want to say, and then networking is also like just creating a connection. Right. You just want to this person to understand that you are a nice, mm -hmm. interesting person, mm -hmm. and that's it. Right, right. You don't necessarily want to him to hire you straight away the first time uh, you see this person. So, and also, I try to I like to think about it in the way, like in New York, everyone has a guy for everything. Mm -hmm. Like I know, uh, you want to go to a hairdresser's, you are asking for mm -hmm. advice, y your friends. You want to hire a photographer, mm -hmm. a band for a m event. I, I don't know, you name it. Mm -hmm. And networking is more or less the same thing. When right. you're finding a job, you just want to have someone that is able to say, this person is adequate enough. Right. Just look at her resume. And then it will be your job to uh, prove them that you are the right candidate for the position. Good job. Uh, uh, it's so interesting because I have uh, I have had so so many interactions with my friends and they always tell me that they, you know, they've been through so many networking events, but it had lead them nowhere. Like they didn't find any job at all. Just going in a networking event doesn't mean that you will get a job instantly, yeah. right? Yes. It's a long-term process. Yes. Can you help us, at, uh, you know, explain more on that? Well, you find someone, you don't ask him for a job. You try to, to create a connection with this person, uh, exchange, and you're investing in a long-term relationship because maybe now this person doesn't, ha well, first of all, this person doesn't know you, so right. <laughs> chances are they, they don't, won't uh, introduce you to a job. Mm -hmm. And then when you have this, when you develop this, uh, this personal relationship with this person, and the person also can involve uh, people change jobs so often here uh, mm -hmm. in New York. So then he or she changes the job and then she understands that, oh, I have someone who is looking for the person that uh, matches exactly the profile of mm -hmm. uh, Anus or Dipika. If you go to a networking event, mm -hmm. never tell yourself that you are there to, uh, like, ask for a job. True. Yeah. I know that just general networking events can be very, very challenging. So mm -hmm. what we try to do uh, with Newman New Yorkers is to organize networking events with for our participants, with uh, in partnership with companies mm -hmm. that are willing to create this more or less spa safe space mm -hmm. uh, that who know um, that our participants are immigrant women, that they're, they're young, they've, uh, they're trying to find a job. Mm -hmm. And I think that starting 
in this kind of um, Kind environment, yes. uh, sec secure mm -hmm. and safe environment, helps you also to understand how does it work. Yeah. For those who might be willing to attend lead sessions in this year, 2019, how do they get in touch with you? So our website is nywomenimmigrants.org. Okay. My uh, personal email, I can share it also. It yeah. is g-y-u-z-e-l at nywomenimmigrants.org. Thank you so much, Gazelle. And if anybody wants to you know, reach out to Gazelle, make sure you write at the end of the day in the subject title so that she knows where these emails are coming from. Yes, and on that note, it's time to wrap up. Thank you so much, Gazelle, for your time. Thank you for uh, inviting me. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. And, and I really al also wanted to tell you that you are doing a wonderful job. Oh. This is so helpful for Thank many you so people. Much, Thank you. And yes, I have a request to make. Uh -huh. So. In the upcoming lead sessions, please share about our podcast. Definitely, your participants. definitely, <laughs> I'll be happy to do so. Yes, yeah. as as a former alum of the lead session, I can proudly say that. <laughs> okay, so we will catch you next week. So keep subscribing our podcast and keep sharing the word on our podcast. So until we catch you next week, bye bye. -bye. Hey guys, a quick note, if you have a personal story that you think might be helpful to the newly arriving immigrants in the US, please contact us. We would love to feature you in our podcast. Go to our website podcast at the end of the day dot com and write to us by going to the feedback section. And by the way, if you love this podcast, you can support us with a small donation. Your help will enable us to continue producing more episodes. The link to support our podcast is in the description below.